good evening viewers and very warm welcome to the 20th episode of meet the media veteran series so today in the episode we have a very talented young filmmaker from los angeles usa she is someone i think you already know her because she has already featured on the show earlier but the, those who are sort of joining first time today on the show so she is someone you know who is an inspiration to future generation filmmakers her cinema is deeply rooted on female issues and widely appreciated all across the globe so before presenting her detailed introduction may i first welcome miss lela danci to the show hello thank you lela very warm welcome to the show thank you so excited to be here again thank you such an honor having you on the show again on the show today Yes. Uh, so you know the, the guys who are joining uh, uh, first time on the show I would like to give the introduction of uh, Lela to all those viewers. Lela Jassi is a BAFTA LA award winner writer director and producer. Lela Jassi began her filmmaking career in Ghana at the age of 19 with Ghana Film Company working her way to the United States on an artist on a scholarship to study film at Savannah College of Arts and Design. Her 2009 directorial debut I sing of a wall I sing of a well netted an unprecedented 11 nominations at the African Academy Awards winning the special jury award for overall best film she followed up with the black reel award nominated ties that bind starring Kimberly Alice of the confirmation and John Q fame the film was an official selection to AFI's new African Film Festival in 2012 her film like Cotton Twins that explores issues of modern day slavery won the best narrative features at 2016 savannah film festival winning the same category at the riverbed film festival in 2017 her other credits include where children play with grammy winner macky gray and unifem advocacy in sinking sands and la film festival best episodic television show for the end single for amc's urban movie channel Lala Jansi has been recognized by various international organizations for continuously using her art to bring light to women's issues and she has consistently made movies for women and about women while employing diversity behind and in front of the camera. She is named amongst 100 outstanding female entrepreneurs in Ghana. May I now request Lala to kindly deliver her talk on breaking into the and working in an American film industry. Thank you so much. Thank you Rizwan. Good morning everyone. So this is a topic that I get a lot of questions about. I get a lot of Facebook messages, Instagram messages. Um how do we get our our, our projects outside of um Ghana or India or Nigeria or any African country I mean because I'm African I get a lot of um my people asking me this question so I have compiled well today's topic is how to break into the American film industry Hollywood and um I've been making a joke on my Facebook saying it's not for the faint of heart it is um you got to be brave you got to you got to get you, ha you have to be used to hearing no 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 and not have it affect you and not get discouraged or depressed you you have to build a wall around your heart and be resilient because you have to keep going back and keep going back and keep getting the same answer every day but one day because every day without the rain brings the rain a day closer so let's get right into it the very first way to break into hollywood and mind you this is my opinion this is my this some of these have been my own personal experiences first is film school it's always film school my last lecture was also uh what what film school does for you and this is also film school because film school gives you the opportunity to network with people who 
would become Spielberg and Scorsese tomorrow. Barry Jenkins, Ryan Coogler, all of these people, they work with people they've been to film school with. And Barry Jenkins, uh, if you remember, he did uh, If Bill Street Could Talk. Uh, Ryan Coogler, hey, Wakanda, Black Panther. They continuously work with people they went to film school with. So assuming you go to film school and you get to um, work with or be in class or be in communication, shared some class projects with someone like Ryan, if he's working on Black Panther today, you could, if, and you're a, 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 a what, a, a costume designer, you could have that job. So film school is one of the primary ways because of the networking opportunities that it offers among fellow students. Um, for me personally, I continuously work with people that I went to school with. I said it last week um, in the previous session that my editor, Asha Bingham, I went to school with her and she is one of the best editors I've ever worked with. Um, when I'm crewing up for films, the first set of crew that I look into are people I went to school with who did amazing things when I was in school. So I go back and look into my Rolodex to see if they're available. My sound designers have been from my school. So film school. Another thing that film school does for you is internship. Now, if you come to America as an international student and you're, regardless of whether you're even an international student or not, when you graduate, from school, you do the school, depending on what film school you go to also, that is also a significant factor. Depending on what film school you go to, you do get an opportunity to intern on a production in a studio, in a production company, a talent agency. You do get to um, intern in one of these places and that also helps you to foster relationships with the people who work there. I have a friend who interned at a talent agency and the script that he wrote was optioned by the agent. And now he's, you know, he, it became a big, big deal film and he's working in the industry right now. So film school and that leverage of getting the school fix you in an internship program that's also one thing. A lot of film schools also have relationships with film festivals that have um, student sections, like Cannes has got a student session uh, section, um, Toronto, uh, Sundance, they all got student sections. So the school, once, you, once the school is submitting maybe uh, possibly like bulk projects, you go to NYU, NYU has something with Sundance and students from NYU are able to get their short films, your student films into Sundance. So that's another thing that, and then, you know, most, most festivals, they waive the entry fee, which does get a little pricey for film students. So that's one added advantage of uh, attending film school. Networking, internship, discounted, uh, festival entry fees or waived festival entry fees or easy entry into a film festival. Film festivals are the ultimate, ultimate places to network and, you know, meet people who, who are gatekeepers, honestly. Even in film school, a lot of my professors, one of my professors when I was at the art center, he was uh, on the board of the academy, right? That's a gatekeeper in his own right. So you do get to meet gatekeepers in your professors. You get to meet, meet gatekeepers when you network because some of your fellow students will become gatekeepers tomorrow. So be nice to everybody. Um, then the, the programs that the, the school engages in also allows you to meet gatekeepers. That brings me right into the second way to get into the American film industry or Hollywood, that is film festivals. Film festivals are possibly the ultimate. They're hard to get into. I said it previously. You do not necessarily get in because your film is good. 
you get in because you know a gatekeeper very and um, it's maybe two in 15 two in 10 before you get in before you because your film is good because i've seen a lot of good films not get in and in the future like how did that get in get in so we we don't know how these things happen if you're lucky you're lucky right so film festivals also afford you networking opportunities now not every film festival does this you have to look for industry recognized film festivals film, uh, festivals that have press and when i say press i mean trades hollywood trades hollywood press so you want festivals that have press festivals that have sale where people go to buy films because the talent agencies the development executives the acquisitions executives they're the ones who attend these festivals those are the gatekeepers but they're not going to go to uh the uh, what blue ridge film festival of atlanta they're not going to that right and there's no film festival called, i'm just saying they're going to festivals that are relevant that they can you know make deals at festivals that then because every, the, the all of hollywood thrives on optics it thrives on press it thrives on noise making so they go to festivals that have noise behind them so if you're trying to get your film into a festival if you're trying to attend a festival and attend events and network make sure you're attending industry standard industry recognized festivals and there are a list of them so if you go if you go to google and you type in um industry festivals it will give you a list you have the top ones that are um sundance uh venice can uh toronto um am i missing one i think i'm missing one berlin please say that again berlin 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 yes those are the top ones right and then you have the ones that come underneath those like slum dance like elephant festival which got cancelled tribeca which got cancelled um afi um south by southwest oh my goodness that's that's a launcher for so many people I, a lot of people who are smaller projects that have gone to south by southwest a lot of careers were launched from the it's, a, it's an amazing launch pad for smaller films you should totally definitely target south by southwest it's actually a little easier to get into that one um new york film festival um and then you have others that are below that as well that are coming up so be very careful what festival if if, if this is your goal if this is what you're trying to do be very careful what festival you're sending you're attending or that you're sending your film to um and that what what the festival also does is there are a lot of uh, panels where you get to hear gatekeepers talk about what they're looking for a lot of times they're just talking for optics they talk and they give you see all these things but when you reach out to them they're going to ignore you i'm i'm here to give you the 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 i'm not here to tell you oh it's easy i'm here to give you the painful as the, the painful path so if it sounds depressing and negative i would rather you have that um mindset so you do not think it's a walk in the path uh, in the park and then when you get to the park and you're walking you're walking on rocks and it's not easy so it's gonna be a lot of negative vibes you'll get from this whole thing because it is not easy but i'm gonna be smiling so it would balance it out so um yeah you you do get a lot of gatekeepers come to these events and they talk but they're really only talking you reach out to them they're gonna ignore you but a lot of these festivals also have programs, labs. A film independent, which used to run the LA Film Festival, they have a lab, very good lab. You submit your project, they, they, they uh, connect you with a mentor, and think people have been launched from there. Sundance has got labs, 
directors, producers, screenwriters labs, amazing labs. You should, you should try and get into those. And if you get into a Sundance lab, you are shooing into the festival, it becomes a launch pad. A lot of people have been launched from lab, Sundance Labs to a festival, to Sundance backing their projects, getting all the press, they become big shot filmmakers. Um, Ken has got a Latelier, I'm not French, so I'm not sure I'm saying that word right, but that's another good one. Berlin has got labs. So festivals have educational aspects to them. They have educational branches. So you should look into those and get your project in those and see what happens. I'm not saying that if you send your project the first time, you're going to get in. You could get rejected for 10 years and then maybe the 11th year when you're old and gray, you get in, but you still got in. That's the most important thing. Now, if you have money, if you have a big budget, if you're going to make a film and you have a big budget, I'm not talking a hundred thousand dollars. I'm talking $500,000 and upwards. Hire a producer, hire a Hollywood producer. Now, when you're looking for these producers, look at the person's body of work. Now you go on IMDb, you see producer. Sometimes a person didn't really produce. You know, he was part of the producers, you know, went on set, hang out, watch the monitor and got producer credit because he knows somebody or maybe he knew the actor and brought the actor on board. It, sometimes you got to be careful. So you don't look at just one project. You look at, a, you know, at least the person should have at least five. I, 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 would, say, I would say even 10, but let's go with five. So at least five producer credits of relevant films, not a film that was in the box at Walmart. No films that have, um, there's nothing wrong with the box at Walmart. It's still a film, but you know what I mean? Films that have done something films that have, you know, with a relevant distributor, that's one good way, right? And then you know the person has clout because what you're looking for is a producer who has clout. So when that person takes your film, he has uh, relationships. He's got network where he can pass your film through and it becomes a launch pad for you, right? Now, getting a producer from Hollywood, it's expensive. Now you will find people who are passionate and they would not really produce your film, but they will lend their name and they would help your film bounce. You will find a lot of people like that. One place to find such people is film festivals. You find them there. You also find them by co you go on, going on IMDb. And if you're making a film about, um, refugees or in, in Pakistan, right? Google films made in Pakistan. Look at the producers or films about Pakistan. Look at the producers and they need Hollywood producers in it. Reach out to those people, right? So look for, look for what genre or what's the scope of your film. Look for films that are similar to yours, right? Or the film that you're trying to make and look for producers who start, who've done something within that realm. And then you reach out to those people, code call them, email them. Some people have their contact on IMDb. You give their producers guild, you call the producers guild and you get your information. You might get a yes, you might get a no. If you sign up for, we'll get at that, but if you sign up for um, newsletters from Film Independent, from Sundance, you will get some names. You follow up, you find them on Twitter, you find them on Instagram, you find them on Facebook. Reach out to them, send them your, don't send your script. Send a pitch deck. If they like your script, if they, if they like your deck, the request for the pitch deck. If you say your finance, because look, raising money is a lot. So telling someone I have a script, 
I don't have money, help me find that. That's asking for a lot. It's stressful. So if you, that's why I said in the beginning, if you've already raised your budget, so you have your budget, you tell the producer, I'm already financed and I'm shooting here and I'm shooting there and I got this cast and I got that. And the person says, okay, half the work is done. I'm not gonna be on set with you, but I, I can lend you my name. Or uh, they, they could say, well, half the work is done. I'm gonna be on set with you and I'm gonna guide you to, through the process. If you get that, get a contract, get an attorney and get a contract. That's number one, get a contract. We've all been burned by not having contracts. So get a contract if you're gonna take that angle. Um, number four, hire publicists. Publicists are very powerful people. They can get you viral in a minute. They can get your film viral in a minute, especially if the publicists have, they, they have um, relationships. Relationships are very important. So if they have relationships and they are competent, yes you have a publicist become your gatekeeper and help you open the doors. So you make a film, you know, as good as Salam Bombay and you get a publicist on board and the, the, the publicist is gonna look at your material and see, okay, what kind of press can I build for this film? And the person takes the film and goes out with it. And that that is, and that is a very great launch pad, especially if the film is good. Now you can get a publicist and pay the money because they're not cheap. It's also very expensive. You get a publicist, you pay the money, but your film is not good, nothing is gonna happen. So your film has to be good, right? If you don't have a film and you just wanna get a publicist because you, you think you're a big shot director, forget it, don't waste your money. You need to have something for the publicist to work with. Um. The fifth one is also very expensive. Cast a Hollywood actor with clout. Um, this is complicated because if you're getting someone with clout, you're gonna be dealing with SAG, Screen Actors Guild. It's not a walk in the park. It is difficult dealing with SAG. They have a lot of rules and fees and requirements that protect their actors. So if you have the budget and you can afford, that's a good way. Now I said also with clout because not every actor can launch a film. Not every actor can carry a film to press. The press are not excited and I've been through this myself. It's not every actor that the press is excited about. The press is the press also work, they work on clickbait. So the, the actor has to be someone that people who buy advertising space are interested in clicking on. The public has to be interested in the actor before you cast them. Because if you just go cast someone, cast someone who played an extra in um kill bill that does not mean anything you're not getting anywhere with that person simply because they played they had one line in kill bill or that they had one line in along al pacino that doesn't mean anything that actor is not getting you anywhere if you have the money and you go for brad pitt or you go for liam meeson <laughs> That is how you launch big. I mean, I'm not saying you should go for those people. I mean, it's just unfathomable. But there are people who you can, you know, go for who will do that for you, right? But remember, you need to have a huge, you need, you need to have the budget for it. You will find, now I gotta say this, you will find actors who are so passionate about the material, about the script that you send them, that they'll tell you, I'll take scale. I've had actors do that for me. 
where they took scale and they did the film. And we got good press because they were in the film, right? So that is also very possible. So write a good, have your, your material has to be very, very, very good. And the role you have for the actor has to have a lot of meat on its bones. And then you get the actor to be excited about it. I've been very lucky getting, because I've made a couple of films outside of America. So I've been very lucky to get actors who wanted to go with me. And, you know, when I, when I did, for, like, for example, like Cotton Twine, we didn't have a lot of money, but, you know, we were able to get Jay Ellis to go with us. And he's like a big shot right now. If we wanted to say anything about that film today with his name in it, everybody, oh, yeah, sure, Jay Ellis, of course, we're right about it, right? So that's one way of getting in. Um, and you're still going to need a publicist if you get an actor because to get... Your film, because the actors in it, to optics, you still need a publicist. So that's why I said it's very expensive. Attend industry events. Now, if you live outside of New York or Los Angeles, which have, or London or France, which have most of the industry events, one thing that, that coronavirus has done for us is it's, taught us how to live virtually. So I know going forward, there are a lot of, of events that are gonna be virtual. Sundance Labs this year was all virtual. It was on Zoom, it was on Crowdcast. So there are you can always attend industry events virtually. If you cannot physically go, there are newsletters, there are workshops, there's masterclass. You could sign up for masterclass and get tips from there. Um, masterclass is actually really, really, really good. You get relevant tips from there. And so you can, it's $200 a year to get on masterclass. So you can sign up for masterclass and get tips and get information on online events that connect you to a classroom or to a networking space or, um, email chains, right? But that's one way of breaking in. Um, well, subscribe to newsletters and grant and workshops as well. A lot of people have been launched via grants. So you apply for a grant for your film, you get the grant, and because you got you because you received a grant, the grantors want to advertise their their program, so they're gonna use your film. So that's another way of breaking in, especially now the basis for all of this is the material that you're working with has to be good. It has to be significant, relevant, right? And so that's another way. And finally, volunteer on film sets. That's one of the easy ways also. It doesn't matter what country you're in. Volunteer on film sets. You do not know who you're gonna meet over there. If you live in America already, volunteer on film sets. I know you want to get paid, but for the first couple of years, don't have that mind that you wanna get paid. Volunteer, meet people, offer your services, and you will begin to network from there. People are gonna admire your work ethic because you got to have a work ethic and they're going to start inviting you and then the money starts coming and then the networking starts coming as well from there and more jobs and then you grow you start from a pa today tomorrow you're a production manager tomorrow you're a line producer next thing you know you're a producer next thing you know you're an executive producer you could even become a director from just rising up the ranks so and also volunteer on uh, at film festivals, industry film festivals. Festivals always look for volunteers. If you can afford to travel, volunteer travel and volunteer at a film festival. And that is another way of um, breaking in. And that brings my lecture to an end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Lila, for such a wonderful uh, talk. <laughs>
and uh, I, I don't think we can find you know a better person than you on on this particular topic you have graduated from a film school and then happen to be in most of the film festivals now you are based in america you know one of the biggest film industry and a very very organized industry there and uh, the, the kind of experience you had in america and and then uh, africa as well uh, it, it's been really very enriching talk for for the viewers today uh, i have couple of questions to you before i take the audience question uh, see uh, your journey started from ghana and you went to a film school and then uh, you sort of you know produce your films you know after uh, yeah, sort of uh, joining the film school so uh, how did you sort of you know approach the, the actors and you know you know technical crew and the producers for your for your first project basically i think that will be that insight will be good for the audience wow because i went to film school it prepared me for crewing up because your very first semester my very first semester i took a class called um shooting on film and we shot on the bolex and your your final project for the semester for the term we didn't have a semester we had terms so your final project for the term you have to crew up so you have to approach other students and ask for a dp a mm -hmm. wardrobe a catering person you have to crew up so that helps you develop the ability to reach out for crew and for cast because throughout the four years of film school each term you are producing something you're producing something for class you're producing something for your final project you're producing your senior project you're producing your thesis you're producing um personal projects, passion projects, and you are hiring people. You're not paying them, but you're still hiring anyway, right? So that is what helped me develop the ability. So for my first film, I already had the experience. I already had that confidence. I've done it. I've been doing it for four years in school. So it was just another thing. The difference was I was paying people for this one. For Sink and Sands, when I was hiring my DP, the DP that I wanted, he was booked on another job. So he recommended another DP, which Adrian Correa, who, who's shooting like all the big HBO Max shows right now. So this is what I mean by networking in film school, right? I met someone, I went to school with someone who introduced me to Adrian and Adrian is now the DPing major shows for a major, 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 major network, right? So I can say, I know one of the greatest DPs in America. He worked with me. That's what film school did. It allowed me to network. So when you're paying, it's easy to crew up. You find a, you find a job board, um, Craigslist, Monster, a Career Builder, right now Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and advertise the crew that you want and you go through their resumes and you interview and then you you're ready to go great great uh, uh lena uh, there, there is this common thing you know all across the world about the film industry you know film industry most of the film industries they have camps and you know lobbying uh so you know for a young filmmaker or for a for a beginner you know how how difficult it is to you know sort of break these camps or get into those camps or maybe you know break those lobbies because uh, every filmmaker you know they want to sort of produce their work as early as possible so but you know film industries are largely guided by these camps and lobbying you know there is this lot of lobbying all across the world so how easy or how difficult it is for a filmmaker is it just you know talent it, it matters or it is something beyond talent as well the good thing about filmmaking is that it's not a one man show, it's teamwork. Mm -hmm. So when you're building your team, one thing that I always try to do is I do not build a team of people who are beneath me. I build a team of people all over people, more people who know better than me, people who are trying to learn. Right. So I'm surrounded by a, a, a diverse group of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if you have your script, and you start looking, and that's why I said, look at the credentials of the people you're hiring. 
So if you find a producer, if you're the director and you find a producer who's done this before multiple times, he's going to be able to detect a lot a scam or he's going to be able to help lobby. Right. If you're the producer and you want to direct that, 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 that partnership is a little easier because you have the experience of a producer or maybe, maybe you don't have the experience of a producer. So what do you do? You hire another producer. You do not say, oh, I want to be the producer. So I'm not going to hire another producer. That's presumptuous. You need to hire an experienced producer to work in tandem with you. It's teamwork. You kind of want to take all the credits all for yourself that's selfish and your your heart is not in the right place your motives are wrong you if you have never produced before please don't go stress anybody out by trying to be the only producer get somebody who's done it before to be on your team and that person is going to help you break through the scams break through the walls and gather knowledge and experience and then one day when you're properly experienced and ready you can be the only producer on your project true that true that very well said uh, so we have a few comments and questions from the audience so i'll read it for you one by one uh, rita so uh, she likes your talk and she says very insightful talk indeed uh, then uh, uh, we have sort of uh, a question from Haruna Shyodhiyasol Zori and uh, Haruna says uh, as an African filmmaker how do I get foreign grant for my movie okay <laughs> you apply you go online and you search film grants you're gonna get a lot you filter through and most of the grants are gonna tell you films that they've already granted and you look at the film you see what the film has done it's a lot of research it's a lot of painstaking research you need to take your time it's not something you're going to do in one day take your time and it's like a school research the grant see what the grant has been able to do right if you go to websites like no film school um tribeca uh, film independent, uh, Sundance, you will get uh, grants and then you apply. There are some grants that are not available to foreigners. There are some grants that are available to foreigners. It's up to you to look for them and apply and just hope that you get in. Follow the requirements. You know, have your package has to be professionally done. So when the people who are in charge of the grant when they see they're like oh my god this looks good and then they pay attention but if, if you send something haphazard and like, this is not well put together they're just gonna put it in the trash but if it's properly put together then um you stand a chance it's not easy but you gotta keep applying true that true that haruna i'm sure you got your answer now for we have uh, another question from Lorraine Addy. Uh, Lorraine says, uh, how do we stay in sustainable, sustainability? I think he's asking for. <laughs> okay. Lorraine actually produced 40 and single for me in Ghana. So okay. <laughs> how do you stay in sustainability? Um, never the same way you got in, you stay in the same way you got in. You continue to network because things are changing every day. Yeah. Hollywood 10 years ago, because I remember 10 years ago when I moved to Los Angeles in 2008 from Georgia. When I was in Georgia, the industry was different. You could pick up the phone and call someone at Sony and get the head of acquisitions talking to you. And then the writer's strike happened and then the recession happened and everything changed. Now things are not that easy. So because the industry is vibrant and it's always changing you continue to do these things you continue training you continue networking you continue attending festivals you continue networking you continue reading you continue following the trends you know and you don't i used to say stay with the same people now i say no 
if you've worked with this DP five times, move on to another because you don't know what you're going to learn from that other person or what, you, what value you're going to receive from that other person. So it's not something you get in and then you stay stagnant. No, it's a constant build up for sustainability. So you have to continuously do these things and never rest on your own. I mean, when you become like Spielberg, sure, you can rest. But until then. True, true. Yeah, networking is very, very important. This will no doubt about it. Uh, Rita, so she says, uh, wow, thanks so much, uh, Miss Lela. This is very inspiring. So I think she appreciate uh, the talk. And then uh, Haruna has another question. As an African filmmaker, how do I get movie or pitch my story into Hollywood? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you pitch your story? <laughs> That's a hard one, honestly. It's... It's near impossible, but there is a website called Blacklist. The Blacklist. You have to do a little bit of searching. But upload your script to Blacklist. If your script is good enough, someone will reach out to you. You upload it, you ask for coverage. Now, there are script competitions. You can send your script to the script competitions you could send your script to a producer whether or not they're going to read it look if you send me your script i'm not going to read it i have to ask for it to read it because you if, if i mean you you ask some one person sends you a script you read it a hundred people are going to send you a script you're going to you you are going to have to try to read it so i just don't at all uh if my agent send me a script i will read it but other than that it's when i receive a script and someone is not funded for me personally it stresses me out so i just don't want to <laughs> i just don't want to think about it. like oh my god now i gotta go look for money it stresses me out so i'm just i'm not gonna read it at all i'm not even gonna look at the email and i'm sure there are a lot of other producers who are like that because it's very stressful to raise money so um if you want to produce it, I suggest you try to raise the money yourself. And if you're funded, you 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 reach out. But if it's, if all you have is a script and you're trying to get someone to look at your script, that's very hard. But Blacklist is there. Upload your script to Blacklist. Look for um, film festivals that have... Bentonville Film Festival has got a script section. Uh, I know Urban urban world also has a script section there are a lot of film festivals that have script sections that you could submit your script to and um if it's good but i'm not saying you should not send your again don't send your script design a beautiful deck right i'm going to show you an example of a deck it's i know how you're going to see it but I'll show you an example of a deck, if, if, if you can see it on my phone, right? A deck looks something like this, mm. right? Design a beautiful deck, right? Um, design a beautiful deck. Design a beautiful deck, right? Something very nice that, and then you send it out. When you send it out and somebody says, oh my goodness, this looks good. I want to read further. And then they ask you for your script. And you never know what happens from there. So it's 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 a toss up. Give it a shot. True that. True that. True that. Uh, I think very well answered this question. And then uh, Augustine uh, Alfre Ordo says, I am learning a lot here. Uh, so again, a very nice compliment uh, from the viewer. Uh, then Rita Sio uh, has a question. She says, uh, how do we add an international touch to our local films to make them more vibrant and attractive? <laughs> you need a good director. <laughs> <laughs> you need yeah. a good, uh, uh, you need a, uh, directing is about how you see. It's about perspective, right? So if you hire a professional director, what, what you're seeing is what the person is seeing. Is the film that you watch is the director's perspective, is his vision, right? And that is why a director is so uh, revered because the ultimate film is 
how the person sees. So if the film does not look proper, it's not necessarily his fault, but that's how he or, he or she sees. So if you want the local content to be something that has international appeal, you have to change the person who is seeing the film or the person who is directing the film needs to um, revive or uh, rebuild how they see. They need to reconstruct their vision, right? That, and then watch a lot of that person. I mean, maybe the person cannot afford to go to film school, but I'm sure the person can afford to watch a lot of good films and, you know, um, drop my phone. And that would be um, one way of making the films look better. True that, true that. I'm sure uh, she got the answer. And Natch, uh, Obab says the talk is very insightful. Uh, then we have another question from uh, Obedullah Rayan. He says, guidance from your side for low budget filmmakers, or budding filmmakers, how they should gradually start his or her filmmaking career. Okay, that's a really, really good question. Do, make a short film. Yeah. Short film. Make a short film that is so poignant and powerful. Make a short film that breaks the mold and send it to festivals. That's, especially if you don't have the money, if you have very little money, why put that into a big film and make a bad looking film? Take the money, because the, the Academy has got a short film section. Uh, Andrew Cherry, who did um, Bad Hair, right? I mean, that's not a good co uh, comparison because he had $250,000 for a short film, but it was animated, but that's why it was so expensive. But people have made short films with less, right? And they have also gone to the Academy because the Academy has a short film section. Every film festival has got a short film session. Um, Cannes has got a short film section where two years ago, I remember there were agents from CAA who were sitting in the short film section looking to represent new talent. Sure. South by Southwest has the same thing. So put all your money into a short film that just blows everything out of the water, which means you have to be so innovative it has to be something, it has to be your perspective on something, but your perspective that is so different from other perspectives, so good that it cannot be ignored. You have to make sure you, you create a product that is not ignored. Reach deep, 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 and bring out the most exciting idea and make a short film. True that, true that. I think very well said, Lala. Uh, this your first film or a short film, you know, it has to be intelligently crafted uh, because you are going to sort of build on the basis of these, you know, small things, especially your first film. And you very well said, you know, the film festivals are the ground, you know, where uh, budding filmmakers, they can get a good break there in the film festivals. Like I remember Khan Festival has a huge market, you know, where you meet a lot of agents and, you know, producers there. And if your film is there, you are able to promote your film. If it is in the selection, uh, then it's a added uh, boon to your film. But it's a, it's, a, it's a strong ground for promoting yourself and your cinema in, in festival like Khan. And they do funding also for the, you know, if your film is selected for your first film, they do funding as well. And I remember Busan Festival is another big festival in, in this part of the world in South Asia, uh, where they have, you know, huge funding for the young filmmakers, you know, through, through yeah. their short films only. So it's, it's like a scholarship and you can go to Busan website. They have a full fledged uh, section for the young filmmakers uh, where they do, you know, a lot of funding for the young filmmakers. So if you want to explore yourself as a filmmaker, there are, there are grounds, there are uh, strong platforms available for you. You just need to search as Lala said, you know, like there is a very good platform for the script. Also, you can upload your script on, 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 on those platforms and, you know, somebody will catch you if you are, you know, something very interesting to see so a lot of opportunities you need to sort of you know dig the opportunities as lela has delivered in indie talk uh, we will move to the next question now lela there is a question from ghana and, and the lady has multiple questions in fact she has a big write-up 
Jamila Suleiman GH. So huge question. I think Lala, you need to adjust your frame so that we could see your uh, face. Uh, at least people uh, can see my face. I'm a bit like my headroom is uh, totally gone uh -huh. now. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Jamila Suleiman says, hello, I am a writer from Ghana. Just started to sell my scripts, but I was wondering if there was an international platform where one can find agents who buy scripts so as to get our stories out of the world. Also, do I need to become a director eventually to tell my stories the way I want? Sometimes some of the directors may not really have the voice that I had where I wrote a script and the film end up for being different from what I intended. How can I deal with that? Okay. Pretty long question. Selling, yeah, yeah, selling your script. Yeah. It's not easy. There are people who buy, what you need is a lit agent. If you want to sell your script, what you need is a literary agent. Again, go on Google, look for a list of literary agents and cold call them or email them. Tell them, listen, this is who I am. This is where I'm from. And I have a bunch of scripts that I'm looking for representation for. You don't know what they will say. Some of them might be like, okay, send me your material. Let me look at it. If they like it, They'll take your script, represent your script, and pitch your script. Now, you cannot by yourself walk into HBO or walk into Hulu or Amazon to sell your script. That is like trying to go see Jesus. You, you will probably meet Liam Neeson and marry him before that happens. But if you have a lit agent, that be, your, your, the work is maybe 10% done. So, yeah. Get a lit agent. So look for lit agents and get your material to them. Get it now. Get in a lit agent. Most of these agents, excuse me to say, are very lazy. They would only represent someone who's already made it. So when they pick up the phone and they call the studio and they say, hey, my client, so, so, and so, and the person or the studio already knows the name of the, the person, it becomes easy. A lot right now, agents don't want to do a lot of hard work and, you know, b brand you or build your career. They want to represent people who are already made. They want to represent people who've already sold a script and it was announced that they sold a script. It's hard. It's so hard. Uh, but that does not mean it's not possible. Uh, There's this guy that I follow on Twitter. He's been trying to sell his TV pilot for 10 years. He just got bought. So it's, it's possible. It's hard, but it's possible. So go online, do a Google search for literary agent and send them all. Just if they are like a hundred, email all of them. You probably get like 20 people uh, returning and see what happens from there. Also blacklist, upload your script to blacklist. You would get coverage. You would get people who are interested. Um, there is also this program called um, Seed and Spark. Seed and Spark. Google Seed and Spark. They have programs for screenwriters. Sign up for that as well. Um, now, the second question, do you need to become a director to see? I don't know how to answer that question properly because as a director, I have received scripts that I mean like, um, this is not really, I don't want to use the word. This is not my voice because I don't know how that sounds, but I've received scripts where I'm just not connected to the material and the writer, the, the, the writer does not want you to do a rewrite. So I just pass on it. I'm like, no, I, if I'm not going to make it my voice, then what's the point out if I cannot make it my vision. Right. Um, I mean, I'm in the middle of a couple of scripts right now where I'm signed on by the writers. I've been a little, you know, difficult and you know, we, the producers are mediating whilst we do a rewrite. But see, for I'm I'm a different person. I'm a little easy because I'm a writer myself, so I can sympathize with a writer. So mm -hmm. when I do ten pages, I send it to the writer. I'm like, okay, I've made this this uh, the t this ten pages are my vision. What what do you want to do? You know, let's finish this quickly so we can get this movie made. 
So I, I, cause I'm a writer and I understand I will compromise, you know, sometimes it's hard to compromise because when the film comes out, nobody's talking about the writer. They're all talking about the director. So it's hard to answer that question. So if you're trying to make verbatim, if you want your scripts to come out verbatim, you might as well direct it yourself or you'll be willing to compromise. Because at every point, someone is going to have a different idea for your script. The, 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 the actors are going to have a different idea for the character. Your editor is going to have a different idea. Sound design is going to have, everybody's going to have, is going to have a, an opinion. You have to be, you have to learn to kill your darlings. As a, as a writer, you need to learn to kill your darlings. You have to kill, sacrifice your children at the altar. It's part of the job. To that. So Jamila, I'm sure you got your answer very well explained by Lela. So we have another question from Augustine. Uh, Otto. He says, I can't afford going to a film school at the moment, but I do study a lot of online. My inability to go to a film school uh, breaks my confidence uh, all the time. Do I only have to go to a film school before I can become a great filmmaker? <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Scorsese went to Bible school. <laughs> nope. And I was privileged to meet him and I went, I was in school and he said, why are you in film school? You don't have to be in film school to be a big director, to be a good director. He's right. You don't have to be. You do not have to go to film school to become a director. No, you don't. What, we, what you're doing, the only thing that film school, not the only thing, the added advantage of going to film school is the networking. That's it. Really. That, it's the networking. But if you can find other avenues to network, don't worry about film school. If you can learn online, don't worry about film school. There, there's two Nigerian kids uh, trending on Twitter right now, Ikoro Du Bois, right? Um, they didn't be. They they're too young to even go to film school, but they they do um, mocks of trailers, movie trailers. They did a mock of Extraction, and it's trending everywhere. And they've been able to make connections. If they were adults, I'm sure they would have probably gotten a deal right now, but they're kids, right? So no, just continue doing what you're doing. Keep learning. Uh, I remember, I forgot who, and I don't want to lie, but I remember clearly there was um, either a director or a DP who was discovered on YouTube. He, made, he was making all these short films and uh, putting them on YouTube, and he got discovered from there. Issa Rae, who's doing Insecure, where was she discovered? In YouTube, you know? So um, keep doing what you're doing, keep doing it well, put it on YouTube, get people to watch it. One day, somebody's gonna discover you. It's ta it takes time. That's the thing with breaking into Hollywood. It takes time. But look, the snail crosses the road finally, right? To that, to that. I'm sure August time you got your answer now for uh, we have last question of this show because we are already touching I think now one hour uh, Haruna uh, another question from Haruna says uh, how do I get a Hollywood distributor for my movie and what are some of the their criteria they are looking for a movie um, get a sales agent it's easier to get a sales agent than to get a distributor so when you get a sales agent, they would look at the film and decide whether it's worth selling. And getting sales agents is very easy. Go online, go on ifc.com. Is it ifc.org or ifc.com? But uh, just Google IFC and um, they're part of the American film market, AFM. So Google IFC, which is part of AFM, and you will get a list of sales agents, film sales, or you can just Google film sales agents and get your film to a sales agent and they will do the hard work. True that. So this question is also well answered. Now, two, three comments only. Lauren Eddy says, thank you, Rizon and Lela, very helpful. Hope you have some more sessions on other topic as well. Surely we have lots of other topic as well and you can sort of uh, watch IMC Manu YouTube channel for the rest of the topics and our Facebook page also, MC Manu Official. And then uh, Logostein of Rodo says, thank you for answering my question. I appreciate this. Emmy Odenkar, I am not in this industry, but enjoying this live session, very insightful. 
uh, Jamila has also posed one more question now. I think we'll close with this question. Again, a very long question. Uh, Jamila says, I have actually sold a couple of scripts and they have been made into films. One of the them is currently on Iroko TV about the script. I don't really mind the changes if they will make the film better, but sometimes it comes out and the dialogue wasn't supervised enough. There are uh, grammar issues and then because of I'm trying to sell myself too, uh, because I am a new, uh, it gets hard because people think that writer did a bad job. <laughs> so yeah, she's a valid observation. <laughs> well, it depends on where you're sending your film to. If you're trying to get your film to places that have that, a place, a platform that houses good films, your, that means your film was done right. But let me say this before we close out. The fact that you wrote a script doesn't mean they have to say all the words you used, right? Because sometimes you can write the sentence, um, I do not love you. And maybe Kerry Washington has to say it. It doesn't drip off her lips right. So she might change it and say, I'm not in love with you. As a writer, you should not be married to exact sentences or exact phrasing you should not because at the end of the day the words coming out of the actor's mouth have to become second skin so allow the actor allow the not even allow it's not your it's, keep the writer far away from the set we don't need the writer on the set i don't need any writer on my set right um and you, the, you got to be open you got to accept you got to realize that the actor has the right because it's his performance, not your performance. You cannot be married to your writing like that. So the, the, the actor has the right to say, can I say this differently? So long as the inflection, so long as the meaning is still there, so long as the threat through the film hasn't changed from what the person is saying, it's okay. Don't worry about you know whether the changing of a sentence or if it, it doesn't matter don't worry about that at all that's don't worry don't worry about that so long if the story is good you're fine nobody cares about it so long as the story is good so jamila i'm sure you got your answer uh, so now with this we have come to the end of the session today and we close this session with a very nice comment from ben effort uh, he says uh, this has been extremely refreshing. Thank you. So Ben Afat, uh, has the closing uh, comment of the day today. And Lala, as usual, your talk has been very refreshing and it's, it's very enriching Hello. as well. You're a wonderful speaker on cinema. Thank you so much, Rizwan. It's so Thank fascinating you. listening to you on cinema. I'm sure all the viewers have enjoyed today and they have enriched themselves. And I'm sure uh, we will interact with you in future as well with, with some more topics. So thank you for joining us today on, on this wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that's it for the uh, show today. Uh, this, this particular topic, you know, which a uh, lot of audience were requesting me, you know, uh, about the Hollywood industry, how to make in the uh, Hollywood industry big. Uh, there are some, you know, uh, different... Uh, uh, perceptions about the Hollywood industry, you know, it works on different parameters. But as Lela said, if you have a talent and you have the networking skills, you know, you can make it, you know, any part of the world. So it's not about the Hollywood, Bollywood or any other industry. You have to have the talent and you have to have those skills and networking so that you can promote yourself any, 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 by any part of the world. So that's it for the show to, today. Tomorrow we are going to discuss yet another very interesting topic. Uh, uh, on, on cinema, which is uh, cinema India as a film destination, uh, which has again uh, remained untouched. This topic uh, has not been discussed uh, in, in you know mainstream media. Uh, we have very important person tomorrow on the show at 11:30, uh, Mr. Vikram G. Troy. He is the sort of head of the film facilitation office in Ministry of Information Broadcasting, Government of India. Uh, which is under National Film Development Corporation. So he's going to talk on this topic, uh, which is India's film destination. So under this topic is going to cover, you know, how you can get, you know, multiple permissions under, under single window, 
because if you are going to shoot at any part of the India, so how to get permissions for the locations, you know, and another related permission. So he's going to dwell on this topic tomorrow in detail. I'm sure you will be joining us tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. sharp today, tomorrow. Uh, so uh, uh, with this note, I'm going to uh, sort of quit this show now. Uh, uh, please take, take good care of you. Uh, we'll be joining tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good night.